Hey there! Have you ever wondered or thought to yourself, why is Jumbotron so hard? Well, to answer that question, it's probably because your lack of experience from playing Jumbotron. But fear not, because in this tutorial, I will be making the quest so much easier on you. Now, this video will be split up into three different segments. First, we'll be covering the variety of weapons, how to use them, and what weapons are meta in this quest. Second, will be the enemy types, what they do, and how to counter them. And third, will be the different tips, tricks, and techniques you can use to make this quest so much easier for you and your friends. With that out of the way, let us begin the tutorial. In order to access Jumbotron, you must first open your watch, then go to the play button. Once you've clicked the play button, click on Rec Room Originals. Scroll down until you see the Rise of Jumbotron. Another way to search for Rise of Jumbotron is by going to the top right screen. There you can find this magnifying glass icon which indicates the search tab. Click on it and you can either type out the Rise of Jumbotron or click on filters. Click on hashtag Rec Room Original and hashtag Quest, then click Apply. And there, at the bottom, you can see the Rise of Jumbotron. Once you've clicked on the Rise of Jumbotron, you are granted with two options. One, you can join a room, or two, you can create a private room. If you want to play solo or play with friends, then I recommend creating a private. If you don't have any friends online and don't want to solo the quest, then I recommend joining a public room. When you first load into the lobby, you'll notice the big sign that says the Rise of Jumbotron. You'll also notice to your left, the pre-game holotar. Keep in mind you need no more than one player in order to start the game. As an added bonus, we also have four different guns located throughout the lobby. Two on the right side sitting on top of the crate, and two on the left, as well as a target range setup. Now that we've covered the main lobby, Let's go ahead and move on to the weaponry. In Jumbotron, weapons are crucial to your team's survival, so it's best to cover the basics first. By basics, I mean weapons. There are four main guns found within this quest, each having their own functionality. That being said, let's move on to our first weapon. The laser pistol. You can shoot it up to five times before it has to be reloaded. You can reload the gun by pulling the back of the top black grip, or by throwing it to flip it upside down. Next is the laser burst gun. The weapon has approximately 22 shots in it before it must be reloaded. If you want a simpler term, then one clip or magazine. In order to reload this gun, one must pull down on the back black grip. Next is the laser shotgun. It spreads upon being shot, has up to three shots before it must be reloaded. In order to reload it, you must pull back on the black grip. And the final weapon on this list is the railgun. It's a semi-auto weapon that has up to three shots before it has to be reloaded. You must pull back the red grip on the sides to reload this weapon. 
as an added bonus are grenades. You must pick it up using either trigger buttons and throwing it in the direction of your enemies. Now, you might be wondering what are the meta weapons of Jumbotron? Well, to be blunt, it's the shotgun and railgun. The shotgun delivers a powerful spread upon being shot that defeats your enemies in one shot, multiple for purples. The railgun delivers a powerful shot that stuns your enemies. It's better for long distance. The assault rifle and pistol are powerful, but only to a certain point, though neither of the weapons can stun enemies like the railgun and shotgun can, and they're extremely weak against purple enemies. So I highly advise to think twice before using them on higher rounds. Each quest has its unique variety of enemies that have different functions. This quest, however, isn't any different. From witches to bats to goblins, you name it. Which leads us into our first enemy. The Treadbot. Fires slow-moving projectiles that can be easily avoided by doing some basic maneuvers. He is by far the easiest enemy in this entire quest. Second is the Bat Bot. Fires three bursts of fast moving lasers that can easily be avoided if hiding behind cover or constantly moving. He is found on the first level and the Tread Bot is found on the second level. The third enemy types are the Mouse Bombs. Spawn in packs around vents. They'll crawl up to you and explode. Best way to dodge them is to either shoot them or get to a high place. The fourth type is the Elite Treadbot. Fires a spray of five fast moving projectiles. They only shoot three times before having a two to three second pause. It's best to stick to cover to dodge them, but if you want to get up close and personal then I suggest a duck. The fifth enemy type is the Elite Bat Bot. Fires a burst of five fast moving lasers. You can get up close and personal if you wish, but you risk going down way earlier than desired. So it's best to dodge from a distance or stay behind cover. The final enemy type is the Assassin Bot. Charges a powerful beam while targeting you, then fires after a short pause usually two to three second pauses. The best way to avoid it is by either taking cover or getting out of its line of fire. Shooting it from the front will do little to no damage, so it's best to shoot it at the power port on its back. The last enemy you'll encounter is none other than himself, Jumbotron. Can be the hardest enemy in the quest if not done carefully. Has a two-barreled cannon under him that fires a total of six to eight fast lasers. If you're in his line of fire or you shoot at him, he'll target you until you're out of his sights. To defeat him, you must shoot his face slash monitor. There are four of them on each side. Note that once one is destroyed, a wave of enemies will spawn, so it's best to take them out so you don't get overwhelmed. Knowing how to get around and what items are where is key to any quest and will help you succeed. With that being said, let's get into our first tip, which is weapon locations. 
Past the lasers on stage 3, there is a shotgun on the box. Down the slope past the enemies, there is a railgun sitting on the wall that you can grab. On the fourth stage, if you take a right and head to the back, you'll see a weapon supply area. On the fifth stage in the ship, there are two railguns that can be used. On the sixth stage in space, past the enemies, there are two shotguns. On the eighth stage next to the dumpster, you can see there's a railgun. And on top of the dumpster, there is a shotgun that you can pick up. On the second stage, a little bit past spawn, there is a shotgun that can be located in this general area. At the very beginning of stage 7, the hangar, there are two railguns that can be located on top of the barrels. Now that we've covered the weapon locations, let's move on to the techniques. One technique you might use would be passive, or to play it safe. This way, if your teammates die and you're still back, you can hopefully clutch the play. The second technique is to play aggressive. The reason why you'd want to do this is to get points and to ensure that you survive. Either that or you just like living on edge and you just really want to get some kills. Or you're forced to play this way in order to survive because your entire team went down and you have to do something in order to clutch it so the reasonable option would be to play passive aggressive. Now that we've covered the two techniques that are used in this quest, let us move on to some tips to help you improve your Jumbotron skills. The first tip is to stick together. Revive first, if mobs are too close, run, and don't be that guy that spawns every single mob at once, or friendly fires on purpose, because no one likes those people. And note that if you end up dying at any point in this quest, that it will automatically fail and there are no checkpoints, so you're going to have to restart from the very beginning and work your way up to whatever you made it to. Tip number two is that bots will usually target the player that's closest to them. However, they will always switch their targets to the last player that dealt damage to them. This can be useful for distracting them for a teammate who can then sneak up on the bot and kill it. The third and final tip is in the final battles with Jumbotron, there is a small wall prop made of metal and glass in the corner of the room, directly right of the entrance. Standing behind it will grant that mobs and Jumbotron will not be able to hurt you. However, if you're in the line of fire, then they will be able to hurt you. This is also useful for being able to distract Jumbotron for teammates to get around. So, I highly advise going to this location if you wish to do this quest safely and easily. Now that we've covered some tips, let's move on to some tricks that might be useful for your Jumbotron run. One trick to use during your Jumbotron run would be to dual wield. Dual wielding is actually really powerful. It doubles the damage of the output of your guns if used right. The main thing you'd want to dual wield would be the shotguns. The shotguns actually two shot purple guys if dual wielding. That being said, dual wielding is the third hidden meta in this quest. If you run out of ammo when dual wielding, you can drop your gun and reload one, or you can throw it up in the air and reload it that way. Another trick is whenever you pick up a credit field monitor and throw it at an enemy, it'll actually stun them, so you can use these to your advantage. And speaking of credit field monitors, that brings us to our next subject, which is the scoring of this quest. The scoring system in this quest is based on points. So killing enemies, destroying credit field monitors, destroying small computer systems, and red barrels will all grant you points. If you end up going down at any point in this quest, however, you will lose approximately 1,200 credits. When you get to Jumbotron and you beat him, depending on the amount of deaths you had previously will depend on your rank and that rank will determine what reward you will get, whether it be A, B, C, or S. And speaking of rewards, this is the newest set they added to Jumbotron. It's a purple variant of the Space Marine set, and the orange variant of the Smuggler set. So if you wish to obtain those specific colored sets, then you have to get S rank. Depending on your rank, as I've stated before, will depend on the color of those sets. So get out there and get to grinding. Hopefully this tutorial helped you understand the various aspects of the Rise of Jumbotron. And hopefully it made doing the quest so much easier. If it did, 
leave a like, and comment down below what kind of tutorials you guys would like to see next. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. It's been Kawaii Konako, and I'll see all of you in the next tutorial. Bye! <laughs>